Hello, my name is Ryan Beakley. I am a senior physics student at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. This past summer, I worked with Dr. Anna Simone at the University of Notre Dame to develop a simulation of the gamma ray detectors in the Hyperion and Starlighter detector arrays. These arrays are housed at Texas A&M University and are used in the study of astrophysical nuclear processes. Starlighter, seen in the schematic on the left of figure one, includes six gamma ray detectors in a circle around a source, while Hyperion, in the CAD mockup to the right of figure one, has up to 14 detectors in a hemisphere. My goal this summer was to simulate a single one of these detectors in GN4 and determine the protopeak efficiency of the detector as a function of energy. A germanium clover detector consists of four high-purity germanium crystals held under vacuum in a thin aluminum casing. Electronics and a doer of liquid nitrogen for cooling the detector are situated behind the crystals. The detector is situated in front of an aluminum target chamber, which contains the source of the gamma ray emissions. Surrounding the detector is a Compton suppression shield, which is made up of four bismuth germinate crystals in an aluminum casing. The images here show the appearance of the detector, target chamber, and Compton shield in the simulation's visualization interface. The shapes and materials of all these components are all created in GN4, a C++-based software used to model radiation transport through matter. GN4 uses Monte Carlo algorithms along with built-in physics models to simulate different types of gamma ray interactions with the detector material. Each run of the simulation includes millions of individual gamma ray events which produce a photon and keep track of it as it travels through the simulated room, potentially interacting with and scattering from materials that it encounters. These interactions can include absorption of the photon through the photoelectric effect, where a gamma ray excites an electron in the germanium crystal from the valence to conduction band and creates a current, or Compton scattering from colliding with a particle where a portion of the gamma ray's energy is given to the kinetic energy of the particle. Gamma rays with energy greater than two electron masses can also spontaneously produce electron-positron pairs, which then annihilate and release two more photons with an electron mass of energy each. GNT4 keeps track of how much energy is deposited in the crystals of the detector, and this data can be used to put together a spectrum of absorbed gamma ray energies. To create a simulation that most accurately matches the type of detector set up at Texas A&M, I ran the simulation with gamma ray cascades from cesium-137 and cobalt-60 and compared the spectra produced from the simulation data to spectra from the same radioactive sources taken in the starlighter array. The spectra are shown in figure 2 on the bottom left, with the simulation in blue and the experimental data in red. The plot on the left is the spectrum of cesium-131 with one 662 keV gamma ray. On the right is the spectrum of cobalt-60 with two gamma rays at 1173 and 1332 keV. The simulation spectra have been normalized to match the photopeak height of the experimental data. Additionally, any simulated event in which the bismuth germinate crystals of the Compton shield recorded energy from a gamma ray has been excluded from the spectrum since the full energy of the gamma ray was not absorbed in the germanium crystals. With this treatment, the shape and height of the simulated spectra match very well with the experimental data. Most discrepancies in the shape can be attributed to background noise in the experimental data. To determine the efficiency of the simulated detector at a given energy, I ran the simulation with 5 million monoenergetic gamma array events and calculated the fraction of the total events recorded in the photo peak. The plot of efficiency up to 10 MeV is shown in the bottom right in figure 3. The maximum efficiency of a single detector is a little over half a percent at around 200 MeV. The efficiency quickly drops off as energy goes to zero, as these low energy gamma rays often don't have enough energy to reach the detector and are absorbed by the target chamber or detector casing. The steady drop off as energy increases can be attributed to gamma rays scattering more before being fully absorbed and some pair production, so a smaller fraction of gamma rays are totally absorbed in the germanium detector crystals. In conclusion, the simulation accurately reproduces experimental data for the gamma ray detectors in Starlighter and Hyperion. Going forward, the simulation can be developed further to include a full array of detectors and can then be adjusted to optimize the efficiency of the array. The simulation can then be utilized to suggest possible improvements to the detector array and make predictions for future experiments.